Hi, this is Lara at Elliott Wave Gold with an Elliott Wave analysis of the US dollar Canadian pair or the loonie for you. This video is a bit different. This isn't an analysis video so much as it's just going to be a video of how I do a wave count on a new market. This is something sometimes that people ask about so every now and then I do a video showing how I do it and I'll give you some tips on how I use Motive Wave as I go through this. I haven't looked at this market before, I don't have a wave count for it, this is not something I've traded and it's not something that I've ever done any regular or any analysis on actually, so this market is new to me. The first thing I do when I'm looking at a new market to do an Elliott wave count on it is start with as much data as you can possibly get. So I squash that up to see how much data I can get on this data feed, this is an FXCM data feed, it's only going to go back to 1993. So the first complete wave, that's obviously a complete wave, is from this high to this low. So the first thing to do is figure out, does that subdivide as a 3 or a 5? Let's have a look. It looks more like a 5. Let's have a look and see how it fits. I'll probably label that maybe a primary degree, yeah. So we'll start there. That would be 1, 2. Three, four here and five, but how does five fit? Does that work? Looks like that's not going to work. Four would overlap one. Does it subdivide as an impulse? No, that doesn't make sense. And if I pull the three, four down here, let's make this a little bit bigger. So I'm going to try it as a five, and if that doesn't work, I'll see if it will fit as a three. I've got one, two, one, two. This could be three, four, three, four, five. Um, a third wave has to be an impulse. I want to put this up here. And I think I want to bring this down here. And I think now we've got a problem there with an overlap here. That doesn't work. If this goes back up here, and now the third wave fits very nicely, but how does the fifth wave fit? No. Hmm. Now if we pull this down here, do either of them work? Yeah. Oh, actually that does work. I wouldn't want to put the end of minor 2 here, because then I think it would probably be truncated. I think I need to look at that at a lower time frame. So I've started at a relatively high time frame monthly. Let's look at this on the weekly and go back and have a look at that problematic part of this wave count up at the beginning. Oh yeah, that's where I'm going to put two there, not there. I don't other if it was here, that would be a running flat ABC with a grossly truncated C wave. So this has begun with a series of one, two, three overlapping first and second waves. So let's count the subdivisions of the third wave. When I'm doing an impulse, the most important part is the middle of it. The third wave has to be an impulse. One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. And that is an impulsive number, so that fits. Okay, let's go back to monthly. So if that's a 5 down, then it should be followed by a 3 up. Mm, okay, so a 5 in this direction should be followed by a 3 in this direction. Which looks like it could be complete. But that would be a really big call to make. Let's move that up 1 degree and have this at the same degree. Okay, let's count the waves within C. It should be 
have an impulsive number, which is to say it should be 5 plus multiples of 4 as each subwave extends. So 5, 9, 13, etc. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 1, oh goodness. Which ones do you count and which ones don't you count? Let's have a look and see if this works. No, definitely want to want to put that there. That should go here. Mm. Oh, okay, that might actually fit quite nicely. Let's have this A wave looks like a five. And let's have a look at this at a lower time frame. Let's look at this at weekly. Okay, that looks pretty good. Actually, that looks reasonably good. I don't know about that. I'm going to have a look at that on the daily chart level. How does that first wave subdivide? Oh, okay. This might be one, two, is might be a combination. little combination because this looks like a three so that would fit well no actually a double zigzag it doesn't make sense double zigzag should have a slope against the trend not be sideways see intermediate one ending lower that would make intermediate two nonsensical what is this no that would be a running flat Oh, okay. What if it's this? Zigzag X flat. Oh, possibly. And that would make sense. Okay, let's make sure that the middle of the third wave is going to work. What a mess. I guess that's why they call it the loony. Lots of overlapping. This would be a nightmare to analyse and trade as it was moving. I think I'm going to pull this down here. Is there going to be an overlap here though? And is the middle of it going to work? That doesn't work. Let's put this back here. And put this here. Oh, that looks awful. And that won't work because there's an overlap. Is this a diagonal? It doesn't look like a diagonal. Okay, I like two as a, an expanded flat that works. Oh, okay, I think we've got some third and fourth waves up in here. And it's behaving like a commodity. So I think we've probably got two of them up here. Yeah. 
No, I don't think that's going to work. No, the wavelengths are wrong. The third wave is the longest, so that violates the rule. What else could be happening there? That looks like a 5 down, so that might be wave C of an expanded flat. Mostly, not perfectly. This looks good. Okay, the middle of the third wave. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. Three, four, three, four, five. Oh yeah, that is going to work really neatly. a triangle I think in the middle of the third wave has to work that's the important part for the wave count and see another triangle there but then that doesn't work and if I put that there it does but is it going to look right let's see if that works oh god that looks awful oh no This looks like an expanded flat. Let's just check the length of B in relation to A. How long is that? I have to make that bigger so I can see it. 65.2. Um, it's over twice the length of A. But C's a 5, B's a 3, and if we have one up here, I suppose it could have a little third and fourth wave in there, but it just doesn't look like a very good wave then. I want to put this here. Is that the high? 107090? 7072 yeah it is so that's where it should start and I think this is another triangle and how does that fit with the trend lines because that's important for triangles yeah that looks pretty good okay I think that is because this is here and now that works quite nicely actually and that works quite well and does this triangle work yeah and the E line E wave falls short of the AC trend line so that looks really typical 
that looks pretty good so running contracting triangle in a regular contracting triangle okay Let's go back to weekly. Okay. Okay, let's go to back to monthly. So I've checked all the subdivisions in there. We've got a new swing low below this point, but it looks like it's got a pretty good support line that it's holding on to. There's a really bearish candlestick there, but it needs to break a support line. Let's have a look and see if I can get a support line in there. It looks curved. Oh, first of all, I need to do this on semi log scale. That's better. Start from the beginning and go up to the end. Let's give that a different colour so it stands out. That doesn't really look very good. What if we put it up here? That looks okay. Okay, that's not really going to be useful. Let's try just a regular extended line. And it's going to be of no use at all. It's far too far away. And that's really not going to be of much use either. And this might be too steep. But I think that might be the best support line. So that looks like a three, sorry, a five down, and that looks like a three up. Not perfect, lots of overlapping in there. I suspect it does truncated fifth waves a fair amount, but looks all right. The fifth wave looks complete as well. Let's have another check on that. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. That looks pretty good. Let's put those labels in. No, I'll put that up there. Set these labels right there. That support line would have to be breached to have any real confidence that this pair has had a trend change. While it remains above that, the trend should be assumed to be intact. Let's have a look at some classic analysis Oh, before we do that. So putting that in a bigger context, if that's a 5 down and that's a 3 up, this is either 1, 2, and there'll be a third wave down when the 3 up is complete, or it'll be A, B, C. So a third wave or a C wave down. Let's put the bigger picture there. Let's assume it's probably an ABC correction at cycle degree. And then the alternate idea would be to see if cycle A fits as a 3 rather than a 5. Let's see if there's a ratio between A and C. No. C is longer than A, but there's no ratio between them. What about ratios within C? Nope. Three is the longest. Oh yeah, 3 is close to 2.6 to make the length of 1. 
That's pretty good. Okay, that looks about right. Let's see if that's got support at all from classic analysis. Okay, let's have a look at the monthly chart level for a start. And unfortunately, stock charts won't give volume data for currencies. Oh god, that's of no use. I want a little bit more data than that. Let's do seven years. Okay, there is some good divergence there at the last high between price and RSI at the monthly chart level, but that's not necessarily going to be helpful. And pinpointing a trend change. And it's got really extreme at that last high. It's come down but it's still close to 35 and still above both directional lines. So it's still relatively extreme. ATR is declining as price pulls lower from this point. Oh okay as price moves up. So ATR was okay for that decline and now this rise might be corrective within a new downward trend. It's a very bearish monthly candlestick pattern there and then a bearish engulfing candlestick there. But we saw that again here and that didn't mean anything. Stochastics did not reach, reached overbought here. And there was divergence only back to here. Okay, single divergence. Hasn't reached oversold. Bollinger bands contracting. And price hovering around the midline. Okay, let's have a look at the more recent picture at the daily chart level and see what we can make of this movement in here. So we want to go back to January 2016. Hang on. This is monthly, right? Yeah, so we want to go back a year. Let's say one year and four months, that should do it. Okay. So here's that four and the subsequent rise is so choppy and overlapping. No divergence at the daily chart level at the last high. That looks really so similar to a commodity blow off top or spike. What a mess. ADX is whipsawing everywhere. the moving averages tell us. Okay so the 34 day which looks like I've chosen 34 because it looks like that's where during a reasonable trend this pair is going to find support or for this one resistance. Could probably I looked at 21 and that just didn't really work. This is such a choppy overlapping movement. This is either the start of a new upward trend or I think more likely a correction within a new downward trend. Short term I'd expect this pair to go up to the upper edge of Bollinger Bands. And let's get rid of some of this. Let's just do five months. Make that a little bit clearer. That's better. So stochastics is returning from oversold. And there was some divergence at the low. Double divergence. And so now it's just above neutral. It's bullish. I'd expect it to keep going up until it finds 
Price finds resistance. And stochastics is overbroad. Short term, more upward movement for this pair. RSI isn't reaching extreme here at the daily chart level. RSI is telling us the same thing. It's close to extreme here. Expect it to go up until it gets close to overbought and price to go up to resistance. So, about 201, 13598. Not above that. We'll see. And ADX doesn't look like it's being particularly useful in this incredibly choppy overlapping market. And it can remain at the extreme edge of Bollinger Bands for quite a long time during a trend. Downward and here upward. Six days. Ten days. Short term I'd expect upward movement and long term I'd be watching that trend line, this one here. And I think, let's have a look with some more trend lines, this is one of the things I prefer to do. of that. How does that work? Let's go back here and put an Elliott channel on this. Use the first technique. One to three. And a copy on two. Actually that fits really nicely. Let's get rid of that other line. That's the one. With a big overshoot for the fifth wave. That does look like it's done but we need that channel to be broken before we could have any confidence of that. So let's create some parallel copies of that and pull them around the place and see how that looks. That looks pretty good. And that looks pretty good. And that looks pretty good. Let's try some copies from this on down. Doesn't look very good. And that looks okay. That looks good. And then it broke down. There's some resistance there which certainly could be broken. This is the bottom line, I think, that needs to be breached. And the Elliott channel needs to be breached. Let's do an alternate. Start fresh. You want monthly. About 15 minutes. So that downward wave from here to here fits well as a 5, well it fit as a 3 as a zigzag. And again let's have that at primary degree. Oh no. That one. Will that work?
How does this work? Yep, I want that there. That looks like, okay, let's go down to the weekly chart level and look at the top of that because again, that's a problematic bit. That last wave, one, two, three, four, five, that looks good. Within it, one, two, one, two, three, four, three, four, five, that looks fine. Okay, that has to go there or it's a running flat and I don't want a running flat. That is entirely possible. Okay, so that could certainly fit in what happened to the rest of the data there. So it could certainly be a zigzag and it's going to be impossible to tell which it is. So if that's a zigzag down, then we've got something like this. That could be a second wave, it could also be a fourth wave. I don't have enough data. I'll just say second wave. There's not enough data prior to know for sure. It could be even a B wave. Let's say it's a second wave, which means this pair could be in a third wave up. Which means because there's this overlaps this, it has to have started with a series of overlapping first and second waves. And the third wave is getting ready to move up toward the fifth wave well into the middle of the third wave actually and we'll put that there so it would have one two one two which is why that trend channel is so important Let's put that channel on this one as well. One to three with a copy on two. Looks pretty good. Let's make it the same colour as the labels. That's the channel that needs to be breached. But unfortunately, here's the invalidation point. Two can't move beyond the start of one. This idea is only invalid below 0 0.94068 and that's far too far away to be of any use whatsoever. Well, it could be either. It could be ready for the middle of a third wave up or it could be ready for a third wave down. And unfortunately, when you do alternate wave counts, you end up often with one or the other. What does volume support more? Well, actually it could be either. If this is the end of a C wave, they can behave like third waves and volume rose quite strongly to the end. And three months in a row here, strong rising price on rising in strong volume to a very strong high there, and yet that reversed and now we've got A bearish, a long upper wick that's bearish, a bearish engulfing monthly candlestick. And a three falling candlesticks at the monthly chart level with a gap here. The gap's found providing some resistance, it's been closed. I would say that this would probably be a more likely wave count looking at those candlestick patterns at the monthly chart level and looking at price behavior and this upward movement is so choppy and overlapping it looks more likely to be corrective let's have a look again at the monthly and tell us what ADX says and we need to go back and look at some more data there so let's look at five years Of this upward movement, ADX says there's no trend, hasn't necessarily been a trend change, and ATR of this upward movement is declining. That looks corrective, that would be my conclusion. 
that this pair may well have had a trend change up here and be on the way down but feel confidence in that this line needs to be breached. I'll write that up. So that's how I start with a new wave count. Starting with as much data as possible at the monthly chart level and then checking subdivisions at lower time frames. If I'm going to do a weekly chart of this recent movement, I'd do it on another chart and I'll label it with that time frame. And this is why. So this is at the monthly time frame. When you go down to a lower time frame, often the labels don't sit quite right. I'm just going to get rid of some of this on this chart. Just to make it a little bit clearer. And squash that up so we can look at just all of wave C on this weekly chart. And make this sit on the right candlestick there. Okay, that's it for me with that currency pair.